Welcome to the Postal Mate webinar, New Owners Quick Start. My name is Karen Grant and I'll be your instructor today. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, we're going to get started with some of the basics in Postal Mate and talk about supported hardware because it's important. You may have purchased your store from a, from a previous store owner and they may or may not have been good about keeping up on current hardware. So our hardware requirements are available on our website. Basically, when it comes to Windows, and it, we only do operate on Windows, not on Mac, um, we stay current with whatever Microsoft is supporting. So if right now Microsoft supports Windows 8 and Windows 10, in a few years they're going to stop supporting Microsoft uh, Windows 8, and so will we. And um, I believe Microsoft Windows 11 is due out this summer, so we'll see how that works. Um, always make sure that your any new hardware pieces that you get um, meet our hardware specifications. Um, you can find those on our website, Hardware Requirements, it's called. And as a new owner or a newbie in the industry, you may have some general questions about why do we use this one and not that one? And I want to tell you that we've been doing this for 30 years. We are the largest retail shipping software in the world, and we do it in this way because that's what's proven to be effective over the long term. Um, some of the equipment, like a scale, is costly, but you don't have a lot of choices with scales because you must have a scale that's legal for trade. So in other words, the little tiny scales that you maybe you get free from stamps.com or you pick up at Staples and they cost $29.95, those are not legal for trade. If your state weights and measures comes in and catches you using that, you will get a fine for that and it can be pretty significant. So you must have a scale that's legal for trade. Postalmate will only support scales and interface with scales that are legal for trade. So those are the kinds of things that we look out for for you. Uh, make sure that you are current on your hardware and your software. Make sure that your Windows operating system is updated. They do tend to have releases for Windows um, software about, on average, um, two to four Tuesdays, almost always on a Tuesday in the week. So um, don't be surprised if in the you know middle of a work week, all of a sudden things change. It's because Windows didn't update. And when Windows doesn't update, so does all of your antivirus and firewalls. They do updates after that. So. Those things happen outside of Postal Make, but can affect your operations. Training opportunities, because you're new, you need to learn. Now, we train you on our software, and we are not responsible for training you about the industry, about shipping, about the rules, about um, how to run your store best. Those things are outside of software. However, having said that, we do touch on it a lot. We're not responsible for it, but we do touch on it a lot to give you extra help. So we want you to be successful. And if we see that we can reach out and do a little bit of that and it helps you, then that's what we'll do. So don't be surprised to see some non-software training in our trainings. We do a lot of that, but we're not responsible for that. That would be um, something outside of Postal Make. But we do have on our website, tech notes, user guides, videos, recorded webinars. We also have live training available, regional workshops that we do throughout the country each year. In 2020, our regional workshop schedule was abbreviated to say the least. Uh, but we will be going to Houston in late August, the last weekend in August. And then if that does well, we will also go to San Diego in the very early week of November, I believe. So, um, be aware of that, and if you can or want to come visit us during that time, you learn about three years of Postal Mate in one long weekend. We, we teach a Saturday, Sunday, because, you know, you, you got to be working at your store during the week, right? So we hope to see you at one of those. We get a huge participation overall in the, all of these trainings. Additionally, uh, communications, make sure we have your current email. If you signed up with Postmate and used your personal email, but now you have a business email, make sure you let us know. Again, same thing with your cell phone number. If you signed up with your cell phone number, but now you have a business phone number, make sure we know so our, our support team, when they call you, doesn't call the wrong number. And um, be watchful of your emails when uh, it is not uncommon at all for a carrier to have an outage. Now, I don't want to scare you and make you think that that happens all the time, but let's just say, um, once a month, we can count on a carrier, and it could be any one of them, 
having anything from a couple minute outage to a several hour outage. Um, several hour outages are rare, but we do see them once or twice a year. Um, it doesn't tend to be, well, it, it, it just, it gets resolved when it gets resolved. So when we see that there's going to be a prolonged outage, it's more than five or 10 minutes, or it's more than just something spotty, we'll send you an email so that you don't flood our support team. Um, we have a great support team, but they can't answer all 3,000 of you at once. So we do uh, send that out. And we also put a recording on our phone. So if you call in, you will get that message. And speaking of support, how to get the best support. You all want the best support. You want immediate support. When you have a question, you want the answer now. And if you have a problem, you want the answer yesterday. So let me just tell you, the best way to get through to us is usually email because sometimes we can respond by email within seconds even, um, certainly within minutes. If you leave a voicemail, then we have to listen to the voicemail and enter the ticket and then somebody who's next available will answer, we'll call that voicemail up. Not a bad way. By the way, live calls are answered about 60 something percent of the time. So it is possible that you could get a live person. Um, of course, when there's an outage or something, you won't get a live person because we'll all be busy talking to other customers. But during the regular week when nothing bizarre is happening, um, it's certainly very likely that you'll get a live person. But if you don't, you can leave a voicemail and or email us support at pcsynergy.com. Um, we always want to have your serial number. That's the first, six, just the first six digits. So it's 10 something, 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 because it all starts with one zero. You can find that in help and then about. Um, and tell us what the issue is. Give us your name and tell us your store phone number. And if you want us to call your cell, then also give your cell number. A lot of times there will be hiccups in the voice recording or something. Maybe we don't get all your serial number. And if we only get a cell number, we still have no way of knowing who you are because our records don't have your cell number in it. So we can't put in a ticket for you. So we, and we want to help you. So, and then the last thing to understand about support is it is not a first come first serve. It is a priority basis. It's just like when you go into the emergency room at the hospital, the guy having a heart attack or the girl having a baby is going to come before the guy who, um, who who's bleeding and, and can wrap it up and hold it or the guy who's uh, limping a little or whatever it is, the guy who's coughing, heaven forbid, don't say coughing in this day and age, right? But you know, there is an order to things. So um, make sure that you tell us what your issue is or you go to the bottom of the list. And so we want to help you uh, in the order that you need to be helped based on your um, issue or concern or question. Um, the guy just needing to know how to run a report is not as important as the guy who can't ship today. So you know how it goes. So having said all of that, let's go to Postal Mate. Ah. And let's see, I'm going to open up Postmate fresh, um, well, almost fresh. I've got it opened up down here. And I want you to notice that Postmate is really tiny on my screen. Now, in other applications that you have on your computer, you can adjust the uh, screen size in Windows and it affects the screen size of everything else. But I don't want you to do that for Postmate. It is very likely that Postmate is your main program at your store. In other words, it's what runs, it's the engine of your store. Consequently, you probably want Postmate a little bit bigger. And trust me, when, when support team logs in, they like to see it a little bit bigger too, so they don't need a microscope to help you. Um, so that is done right within the program. And we'll walk right there real quickly. Tools, Postal Mate, Settings, down in the lower left, Station Settings. In the right-hand side, it says Size of Transaction Screens. You have several choices here, and it depends on the graphics card in that computer. So you have to do this on each workstation because your graphics cards have different capabilities on each workstation. So um, for a small computer, you might only have two or three choices. For a larger computer, you might have as many as five or six choices. So in this case, just start with the largest and click Save. And Postmate will relaunch, and that way, um, you can see how this does for you. If it's too big, well, then you can always go down, but start with the largest and see how it goes from there. And we'll give that a minute to reopen. Wow, 
that's a lot better, right? Once you've allowed PostalMate com to completely launch, then it's time to open CashMate. And CashMate and the POS, those are the same same thing. They mean the same thing. Sometimes I'll mention, call it POS, and sometimes I'll call it CashMate, but it means the same thing. And so right down here, we can click on the, the POS button. Also, we could click the icon. It doesn't matter which way you open it up, but I like to click on this button right here. So that's going to open up CashMate. And you can see that's also going to be real nice and big. And then we're going to open our register day. So we'll go up to file. Hold on a second here. It's thinking about it. Open register day. And you enter the amount of starting cash. And that might be the same every day and it might be different every day. So once you enter that, you can click OK. If you want to count out your drawer um, when you start the day, especially if you have multiple employees, that's a good idea. Then you can click on the calculator here and it will help you. But I'm just going to start the day. I'm ready to go. So let's go over to the shipping side of PostalMate and let's take a look at some of the buttons, functions, and features. On our main screen, you'll see that over on the left-hand side, I have a list of items here. Now, my list might be longer than your list. Um, there's no difference between my PostalMate and your PostalMate, with one small exception we'll talk about shortly. Um, except that I have things turned on that you may have may not have yet turned on. Maybe there are things you haven't found or don't offer in your store. Um, but there's probably some things here you want. And so there, you can turn them on. So make sure to take notes of anything that you want. If you know how to take a screenshot um, on your computer and then paste it to a Word or a notepad, that's a great idea or an email. Maybe just take your cell phone and take a screenshot of something, a uh, snapshot of it. And then you can ask our support team to help you with anything that you have an interest in or want to learn about. But for right now, ship mail is the one that you're going to use the most often. Freight is a freight entry program. Pack is using our packing um, estimating program. Quote is so that you can give an estimate or quote to your customer, which is a full written estimate, and it will save the information for, for pulling up later. So if that customer comes back to ship the item, you'll have all of that those details. Receive hold is for receiving packages. So that would be like a mailbox customer. Um, maybe receive some packages. This is where you can record those. And then the famous other activities. And other activities has a lot of things that we'll talk about shortly. So let's go back up to the top to ship mail, because that's the primary thing that you do. Um, this is where the money is. Uh, parcel or document hopefully is going to be almost the most used item in your store button in, in on PostMate. However, in this day and age, we have an awful lot of drop-offs. So when you receive a drop-off, that is a prepaid package with a label on it from your customer to give to the carrier, you're going to record it right here. And then finally, quick postage. This is where you're going to find out how much postage to place on a small item going first class, generally a postcard letter or flat. You may or may not use Indicia. We encourage you to use Indicia in most cases. If you do not use Indicia, you can reach out to our support team and find out why you should. Indicia is a, an approved USPS provider or reseller of USPS postage. We interface with Indicia. Indicia, by the way, is owned by stamps.com, which you've probably heard of more than Indicia. Indicia is kind of their business side, if you will. And so that you, quick postage can be done so that you can actually print stamps. And so you probably will want to print stamps and then also create full labels for um, first class priority mail, express mail um, type of packages. So we will indeed look at that. So first of all, parcel or document. And shipping a parcel or document properly in Postmate takes you about 90 seconds when you're completely skilled at it. In the beginning, it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, I'm a lousy, horrible typist. And even I take less than 60 seconds on um, most shipments. So 90 seconds is easy. The first thing it's going to ask you for, if your setup is done proper, and you can customize this. So when I say proper, if, you're, if your setup is different, it doesn't mean yours is wrong. It means yours is customized for your store. When I teach you how to use Postmate, I'm going to teach you the recommended way but it's not the only way to use PostalMate. So please don't think that you're doing anything necessarily wrong. It's just you've made or somebody in your store has made different choices. But there's a good reason we teach it the way we ought do. That's so that you don't miss anything that's important. 
So the first thing it should ask you is who is your customer? That's the person standing in front of you. Now you can enter them by the last name here. If they show up over here on the right, great. You can just select them. If not, you can add them. In this case, I'm going to pre-select a customer and go to the next screen. Now this wants to know where is this package going? And you can enter the zip code. And if that address is over here on the right, great, select it. If it's not, click add. By the way, there's a little hidden feature here right down below, show only records for this customer. When you check mark that, it shows the addresses over on the right hand side that the customer you have selected has shipped to before. So it becomes their personal address book, which is kind of cool. So if I click on that, well, they have never shipped to this zip code before. So there's nothing there for them. Or you can uncheck it and go back to the, your entire database of ship twos. This is a new address, so I'm going to select add and choose the city. And all right, and there we go. And now remember, an address is never complete without a phone number. Sorry about that. So make sure that you always enter a 10 digit phone number. And then you can enter their email address if you would like. Um, Verify address has recently changed and Indicia offers a service called address validation. Sorry, I had to think about that. ELS address validation. So if you have an Indicia account, that will be the primary method or should be the primary method by which addresses are verified. What we mean by verified is it's checked against a system, in this case USPS, to make sure that this street address is correct. It exists as it's written. It adds the zip four and it may tell you whether or not this is residential or commercial. Be very careful with that. When the USPS tells you it's residential or commercial, that does not mean that you, UPS or FedEx will agree with that. UPS and FedEx have their own criteria for whether it's residential or commercial. So I'll try to explain that. Um, so a nursing home to the post office is a commercial establishment, but a nursing home to UPS or FedEx is a residential establishment because somebody sleeps there. So the kind of the rule of thumb for UPS and FedEx is if somebody does sleep there or can sleep there, it's a residence. If you're sending clearly to the office manager at that nursing home, you need to state um, office manager uh, or front office or something like that, um, nursing home director or whatever it is so that um, it's clearly going to the business side of that. In that case, um, the carriers will designate it as a, com a commercial rather than residential. Well, why is that important? It's more expensive to you for UPS and FedEx to ship, and DHL, by the way, to ship to a home or a residence than it is to a business. You get charged more for a residence. So it's important to make sure that you don't um, send it thinking it's going commercial and have the carrier actually charge you for residential because they will. So when you verify address, you can select this button here and it will verify everything that you notice over here, it put the zip four, and this is classified as residential. If you have further questions, if your customer says, no, no, that's a, not, that's a, that's a business, you can always hit Google Maps. Um, Google Maps is great for domestic, not so great for international, it does some international, but you can hit Google Maps and take a look at that place and say, you know, I respect you and everything fell up, but that, is very clearly not a business, um, not even a little bit. So um, that's kind of to help you out. And then we're going to click OK. But before we move on, I want to point out one more little feature on this page that's cool and sometimes goes unnoticed. Once in a while, you'll have a customer come into your store that's sending to themselves. Maybe they're visiting your area and picked up some knickknacks and want to send them home, or maybe they brought their golf clubs out and want to send their golf clubs home or whatever. So you start out in this and you enter their, in, their name and information, and then you get to this page where it says ship to, and you say, okay, where are you shipping it to? 
And they said, well, I'm shipping it to the same address I just gave you. I'm shipping it to my home. And you go, oh, well, would you give me that information all over again? Instead of having to do that, there's a magic little button in the lower left that says copy from customer. And when you click on this, all the information that they gave you as the from will also be entered as the to. Isn't that cool? Now, bear in mind, as far as all of the carriers, all of them go, the origin is always your store. So when they're deciding how much to charge you, it has nothing to do with what the return address the customer gave you. It Because all of the carriers know they're picking it up from your store. So that's always the origin. And in fact, for UPS and FedEx Domestic, on the address label, your store is required to be re the return address. For international UPS and FedEx, for all DHL and for all post office, your customer can be the return address and should be the return address. All right, so we're gonna click OK. Postman is making sure uh, it gets correct time in transit information from the carriers as available. This screen may not populate for you, and that's perfectly fine. It just means that your scale is hooked up to your computer. I don't have a scale hooked up to my computer. If your scale ever, for some reason, um, the cord stopped working from the scale to the computer, don't panic. Just call our support team. We can uh, disconnect the, the communication between the two, and you can do like this and manually enter a, a, a weight here. And I'm actually going to enter one pound for a minute. And then how was this packed? Well, this was already packed by the customer. And then you, this is a very important screen. Um, is it generic packaging or carrier branded packaging? And what's the difference? So there's two different rating programs, one for generic packaging and one for carrier branded packaging. So let me talk specifically, Ger generic packaging, well, let me go backwards. Let's talk about carrier branded packaging first. Let me bring up here, there we go. This is an example of carrier branded packaging from FedEx. UPS has similar packaging. Post office has similar packaging. DHL has similar packaging. All of that would be considered carrier branded packaging. Okay. All other packaging is considered generic packaging. And so when it's generic packaging, you must enter the dimensions. When it is carrier branded packaging, you might be asked to enter the dimensions. Usually not, but on some cases you are. So let's say on this one, it is a six by six by eight. That's a pretty small box, agreed? Yeah. And then down below, this first one is terribly important. Article not in standard container. You need to re read the carrier rules and memorize them about what is considered a standard container. They are different for different carriers. In general, um, if an item is not in a standard box or bag, then you would check mark this. So if it's a bucket, pail, suitcase, wooden crate, metal toolbox, Rubbermaid container, um, big giant bag, round tube, like you'd put blueprints in or a poster in, or a number seven padded envelope, which is the largest padded envelope, those things are generally considered not articles not in standard containers, and you would need to check mark that. Oops, and I missed putting in the eight properly up there. So when you check mark that, then Postalmate will add the additional handling fee for the type of packaging. There are a multitude of additional fees that can be added. They're called surcharges that can be added to your package. Postalmate will catch pretty much all of them except this one because it can't see the type of container that is, is being used. You have to help it out here and let it know. So this is your way of letting it know that the container is not considered standard by that carrier. Um, and I've got a great question here. Why is an address never complete without a phone number? I know FedEx requires it, but what good is it in say a first class package. Post office won't use it. However, post office does use it in, in, in international packages and some other cases, um, express mail packages, for example. So sometimes the post office does require it. So if you just get in the habit of, of knowing that an address is never complete without a phone number, then if you go back and reuse that address in the future, you won't end up with an error at the end because you didn't bother to ask the first time. So great question, Ben. I appreciate that. All right.
And this, this item right down below, padded envelope or soft pack, that we're not going to talk about today. That has to do with cubic rates only, which is a special rate from the post office. And there's a whole recorded webinar on cubic rates, and you can watch that from our website. We'll go next. Enter the declared value. Please do not get in the habit of just entering $100. If the previous owner told you just enter $100 every time you get to the screen, they were misinformed. So what you need to know is that many carriers offer uh, um, an amount of coverage without an additional fee. Sometimes that's $100. Sometimes it's less than that. Sometimes it's more than that. So if you enter an amount and you happen to pick a carrier that charges for that $100, maybe it was only a $10 thing, but out of habit, you just put $100 in there, you get, you're going to get charged an additional insurance fee in that case. So make sure you always enter in here what the customer says the value is or leave it blank. If you leave it blank, you do not waive your right to the free amount of coverage. You still are covered by the carrier for that free or included amount of coverage. So make sure that you only enter the amount said by your customer or leave it blank. And then you get to your rate comparison screen. Now, I know that your rate comparison screen and my rate cons comparison screen look different. The reason I know that is this is highly customizable and I've customized mine to the, to the nth degree. So <laughs> I'm not saying you have to have it look like mine. I did mine like this so that you could see the options you have. So the first thing we'll notice is that on the left-hand side, we have the data or details of the package, and in the right and middle of the screen are the different rates. And you can see on the right-hand side, I can scroll down and see um, different rates if there's more actually. I think we got them all covered on this one. But um, there is a different view you can look at, and that would be this view, which is all of the rates only um, and not with the data. I happen to like the data on the left because invariably you'll have that customer that comes in and says uh, you'll get to the declared value screen and they'll say oh no i don't want to i don't want to pay for any extra insurance just go on and they'll get to this screen they'll say okay wait a minute i'm thinking about it how much would it be if i insured it for 300 dollars?" and so you enter 300 dollars right on the screen click okay let it readjust and you say oh well the price is now 20 dollars and 33 cents for for fedex and then you're, you're smart and you say what's in that package that's worth $300? And because it's a pretty small box and you're thinking, ooh, it better not have any jewelry in it or whatever. And they say, oh, it's got a gift card in it. Well, then because you've read the rules, you know, gift cards are not insurable. So unless you have something in there that is insurable, it would be a waste of your money to insure it for 300. Oh, well, I guess take it out then. So now you can hit zero, click OK again, and the price goes back down. This is sorted by cost least expensive thing is first most expensive thing is last you can resort temporarily down here by time not by cost but by time and that will make the fastest thing first sometimes you get that customer in that says i got to get it there right away what's the quickest you can get it there and in that case you have your options set by that usually we want to look at um, by cost there's other magic that happens on the screen um, once we select a service, first of all, I want you to notice that I've named the first tab here best services. I only have the services on here that I would want to sell at my store. Now, I have other services available like Media Mail and Parcel Select Ground, but I'm not going to sell those unless I'm asked for them because I don't make as much money on them. I don't get great discounts. In fact, I don't get any discounts on them. And so my margin is not as healthy. I'd rather sell a service where I get a better discount. And in fact, with Priority Mail and FedEx Home Delivery both being um, close in price here, I can probably upgrade this customer to FedEx Home Delivery saying, you know, it's going to be there, it's time definite by Friday, and it's going to be there by the end of the day. It has a great tracking system. Would you like FedEx? It's a little bit more reliable than just general post office with no guarantees. You can usually sell them for 70 cents extra. So that's kind of my methodology on this. If I had other options on this screen, especially if my customer could see it, that were less and that I didn't make as much money on, that's where they'd always go. So I have them available, just not on my main screen. Um, so once we highlight a service like FedEx Home Delivery here, we get a few things that show up up at the top. Uh, first of all, the logo, logo shows up. Uh, then we have the dim rate or, or dim weight. And that's telling us, whoa, 
interesting. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hope <laughs> my lights went out. Um, so that uh, shows us that because of the size of this, it's rated at two pounds, even though it only weighs one pound. And so you, you will know that um, if we enter, let's say we enter much bigger dimensions, watch how that changes the dim rate. Wow, now that's 17 pounds, even though it just has a lampshade in it that only weighs one pound, you're being charged for 17 pounds. So if the customer says, but it's so lightweight, why is it so much? You can say it's because the size, um, because it's so big, it's being rated at 17 pounds. Um, perhaps you wanna go back. And now we get there. You will see that you have time in transit for FedEx, for UPS, and it would be for DHL too, but this isn't an international shipment, so I can't bring up a DHL. USPS and Indicia do not provide time in transit to PostalMate. Um, it's just not available. Consequently, it's blank in your PostalMate. You do have the option of going in and entering static words so that um, you can have a range or other terminology that will help you with the sale of that particular shipment. So for example, you can see with priority mail, I've entered two to nine days not guaranteed. Those are my words that I entered in my Postmate. It's not gonna be in your Postmate unless you add it. So let's look at other options that we'll go over here at US Mail. Media Mail, this is to help me and my employees remember that we can't send clothing by Media Mail. We can only send educational material and that it can take one to six weeks. Um, I always lean on uh, having the time period longer rather than shorter with USPS because there are no guarantees and I don't want my customer coming back angry that I said it was going to be there in two to three days and it took four or five days. Things happen and I don't want to be responsible for something that's not guaranteed, uh, especially true with things like parcel select ground. Last to load, that means every time there's a truck or a train or a plane that these things are going on to, that Parcel select ground is basically a third class service. Uh, express mail goes first, priority mail goes first, first class mail goes first, parcel select ground is towards the end. So if there's no room for it, it has to wait for the next truck, train, or plane. Um, so just kind of good information to have um, when sharing with your customer. And when we say weeks, that generally, that's going to Alaska, Hawaii. It does take, it can take several weeks to get to those locations. And let's go back. So let's, so let's go pick on FedEx Home Delivery. And I want to look also up at the upper right. You'll see some numbers in gray. There's an A, a C, and D. So unless you've turned these on in this particular order, yours is going to show something different. Um, again, it's just a setting that you set in your postal mate. The A number, A is always your cost. It should match your bill within two pennies every single time. If it doesn't, it's... Um, either you haven't updated Postmate, you don't have your correct rate group or tier level selected, or you've entered your weight and dimensions or something about the destination differently than the carriers did. So um, a person who's done all of those things properly, their bill will match Postmate within pennies, like two pennies on every package. And when I say two pennies, honestly, it's to the penny most of the time. It's rare that it's a penny or two off. And that would just be numbers rounding up and down for the cause of that. So Postmate is, is what I'll call deadly accurate with rates. And we have to be. We have 3,000 customers that check their bill and call us out if we're not accurate. Are we always perfect? Of course we're not. We do make mistakes. But when we do, we have 3,000 people that point it out to us right away and we fix it immediately. Uh, we do not let any rate issues go on. We're very, very careful with that. So the A number is your cost. The C number is the published rate before any discounts. It's not terribly important with UPS and FedEx, but with post office, for example, when I click on this, that C number, the published rate, that's what the customer would pay if they walked into the post office. That's kind of good to know. Um, and then the D number is your dollar profit. So basically it takes this retail price, which is in, in the cell here, 14.03 and subtracts your cost, which is 8.54, and the difference should be 5.49.
And the reason that's important for you is sometimes you have several prices that are close and you can look and see if one gives a significantly better dollar profit for you. So I've got 549 here, 577. See, my discount makes it so that mail, I make more money on mail. So in this case, I'd want to sell mail over FedEx. I wouldn't know that unless I had the D number turned on. Now, granted, it's only 25 cents or 28 cents, but 28 cents several times a day over a course of a week and a year adds up. So make sure that you're using that D number. We'll go over and look at UPS real quick. Oh, I make 1079. Of course, it's a lot more money. I've got my margin set differently, so it's a lot more money. Um, but you can see the difference. You may ask, why can UPS not be on the same tab as all my other carriers? I want them all to show up together so I can compare. And that's a reasonable question. And I wish that we could. Several years ago, we did have it that way. And then UPS came out with a rule that said, um, you are not allowed to display UPS on the same screen with other carriers when showing prices. So we had to make it so that they could not share the same screen. We apologize on behalf of the world for that. Um, that may change in the future. It's not helped UPS sell more services in our industry. I think it's hurt them in the long run. So we may see that change in the future, but it's been that way, I'm going to say for about 10 years now. So it's not something brand new. Um, so it is what it is. Um, you can make, if you use a lot of UPS in your store, you can make these change, move these tabs. So you could make UPS your first tab and have all these other things, your second or third or fourth tab. So up to you. But at my store, I would have an, a tab called best services first. So once again, I'm just gonna pick on FedEx for now. We're gonna click on the next screen. Any, sir, any additional add-ons that I want would be available here. Click next. Any last minute changes I wanted to make, I could look at here and go backwards. Um, there are, by the way, seven different ways to make a discount happen in Postmate and Cashmate. One is on the shipping side. Six of them are on the POS side. So I'll show you the one that's on the shipping side right here. And that's the little, little minus sign in the lower left corner. You can enter a dollar amount here, not percentage, just dollar amount, maybe a $2 coupon. Click OK and it will appear here. If you miss entered or want to remove that, you simply click it again and it goes away. And then you can start all over again. You can list the contents right here if you want to. You can make it a store policy that you always have to have contents listed and you can have um, Postmate set that way. Um, anytime this line is yellow, the contents line is yellow, you're required to enter the contents. That particularly will happen on international items. And then you can click finish. And when you click finish, it goes up to the carrier. The carrier creates the label and it's a pass through label to Postalmate. And that will print out of your Zebra printer. Um, once that prints, and you can see this is the, remember I said in the very beginning, there's one slight difference in my Postalmate from your Postalmate. And this is it. My Postalmate will show the virtual receipt here your postal mate doesn't have that option. And this is for training purposes so that you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about the various labels. So this, obviously this will go on the package. Um, you're always gonna wanna put some tape on top of this because they have been known to occasionally peel off the package, especially a package that has paper on it, which is really not allowed by the carriers, by the way. And so once you do that, you can have options for other labels to, to appear. You can turn these off. This is a ship info label. I think I would not have this turned on. There's really no good reason to have it on, but there's other labels you could have on too. Um, the first one is the only one that you really need. Once you've completed this shipment, maybe you have something more. Maybe they have an envelope they want you to weigh and you plop it on the scale and it weighs three ounces. And it's not a letter, it's an actual, actually a manila envelope. So you click flat. Now to know the difference between letters and flats, you could choose the guidelines here and learn. And you do need to memorize these. These are very important. Um, when you choose first class postage and everything in here um, on this, this screen that you're seeing now is first class, you don't get to choose whether um, it's a letter flat, or, uh, letter flat or postcard based on what you wanna pay. It's based on the what's called shape-based criteria of the actual item. And that includes the shape, uh, the type of item it is, its size, there's a whole lot of factors. So exa for example, 
Um, this is a flat manila envelope, and so it's $2.33. However, if I put a hardback book in that envelope, it's no longer a flat. It now becomes a parcel because it's not flexible. Those are some of the rules in shape-based mail. So you may want to write down shape-based mail and learn more about that. You can just Google it, and you'll get the information from USPS on shape-based mail. I can't say that enough because uh, it's terribly important. You don't want your postage going postage due, your mail pieces going postage due. That will make angry customers. So in this case, let's say it's just a regular flat and it doesn't have a hardback book in it. It has a magazine in it and a magazine is perfectly fine because it's flexible. But now let's say it's a really thick magazine like an old Sears catalog. Okay, so maybe not that thick. Um, okay, I'm dating myself here, aren't I? But really thick. Well, now it's too big to go as a flat. Again, those are things that you have to know. We'll take a quick look at the guidelines here. Um, this is going to let you know on the flat, it can has to be 13 ounces or less. It can be um, 15 inches long or less, 12 inches wide or less. But here's the key, no more than three quarters of an inch thick. So that big catalog would be too thick and probably too heavy. But, um, but a magazine would be okay. It has to be flexible. It has to be of uniform thickness, so it couldn't be like a set of keys in there. Um, and it has to be rectangular um, or square. It can't be a not, not that there's a lot of triangle envelopes out there, but you know, people do weird things with their envelopes sometimes. So if you want more information, you can click on this button down here and it will take you to the domestic mail manual rules. So once you've selected that, you can click record and a stamp will be produced if you're connected with a Dymo printer with Indicia's ELS printable postage. Um, in my case, I don't have that set up. So, um, and then I can close that. Now I've, I'm complete with this customer. I'm ready to cash them out. And I click on the POS button. And just a heads up, your POS side or cash mate needs to be open at all times. You, you should never click and the X and close out of it, except at the end of the day when you're actually closing down because the information on the shipping side can't transfer to the POS unless it's open in the background. Uh, so you're gonna click on the POS and it does two things. It takes you to the POS, but it also transfers that information. If CashMate was not open in the background, that information would be stored in the hold recall area. You can recall it, but that's where it goes to hide while it's opening post or opening CashMate. So basically what I'm saying is it can't do two things at once. Once it can't launch CashMate fresh and transfer the information into the virtual receipt all at the same time. It can throw it into hold and launch it fresh. So we've got our information here. Now the information on this receipt is up to you. You can, you can dictate what information goes on this receipt in the settings in CashMate. You can also add additional information on here or, or sales. So let's say your customer wants to buy some things, uh, 50 copies. So we can do 50 at black and white letters. Let's say they want some boxes. They want a 12 cube. I do not recommend putting any boxes on these tabs. These tabs are limited. There's quite a number of them with, with quite a number of buttons, but they are limited. The average pack and ship store that's been in business for five years or longer has between 40 and 70 different box sizes. That would take up all your, all your buttons. And it's a little bit, crazy going through and looking for your boxes in there. So to ring up a box, we recommend that you use the SKU number in Postmate as the size of the box, and then just enter that. So for example, um, they're going to purchase a 12 cube box. I click on enter SKU, 12, 12, 12, enter. And there's that box. But let's say they want four of them. Okay, four at enter SKU, 12, 12, 12, enter. There they are. Let's say that they only wanted four, they didn't want five, and now you've rung up an extra one. So you can click on that one and void it by highlighting it and then looking for void item. These items here, again, are customizable. If your previous store owner, um, if you had a previous store owner at your store, they may have moved things around. So you find void item. Yes, I want to void it. And now it is removed from the screen. Um, the charge is removed. Sometimes we get a question as, 
can it just disappear? Does it have to show void? The answer is it does have to show void. If you go to Walmart or Costco or Sam's Club or wherever, and they ring something up by accident or have to void something, that will always appear on the receipt. And that's um, because they adhere to something called the GAAP, Global Accounting Something Principles. And it's basically a set of retail principles adhered to by major retailers in the United States to keep everything transparent. Postmate it tries to adhere very much to those. And so void will be, will remain on this receipt. And then let's say um, they wanted to book a stamps. Now, let's say they also, you're also going to give a discount because they um, purchased four boxes and they're moving, you want them to come back and get more boxes. So you're going to highlight that and say, I'm gonna give, them, give you a 15% discount. So you can highlight it. And then I have all my discounts over here on one tab. You can arrange yours that way as well. So, and then 15% um, discount item. And then you can see the discount will appear right under the item right here, okay? Now you can see this is getting pretty full and I can scroll up and down but you could get this really long. There's a faint little circle with an arrow that will appear once you have several items on this receipt. If you click on it, you get a whole receipt here that you can look at everything at once. Maybe you had to look at something and then it shows the faint little circle with an arrow is hiding down here. If you click on it again, it goes back to the way it was. Of, of course, you can always just use the scroll button. Now we're gonna cash out. We click the total button and choose how, <clears throat> excuse me, frog's coming. You choose the method of payment. Nowadays, it's almost always a credit card. So you can choose your credit card, run that credit card either in a system that is interfaced with Postmate or from a separate system, your choice. Don't We don't care one way or the other what you do. Uh, and then click finish. Now you should have the option of choosing to print the receipt. If you choose to print it, it can print on the standard receipt printer, which is the three inch wide thermal paper, or you can have it print to an invoice. Now that's a paid invoice. That's not like an invoice on an account. That's a paid invoice, same as a receipt, um, but it's on eight and a half by 11. And the reason you might occasionally need this is school systems and chambers of commerce and government, um, when they send in their uh, receipts for reimbursement, a lot of those um, groups require a full invoice, not a, a tiny little receipt. So your customer may request a full paid invoice. And so you can do that from the screen. In fact, if you check mark both, they're both going to appear. And you can email them to your customer. And you could do both. If you uncheck both of these, then you'll get no receipt. So totally up to you. This is preset. We don't have, have the option right now of... Um, changing the presets on this or defaults, it will always be defaulted to printed on the standard receipt printer because that's what most, that's the most common and standard in the industry. In the future, we probably will look at giving you more options with this. As the world becomes more digital, email receipts are gonna become more of a thing than printed receipts, I think. So at this point in time, I'm just gonna print both of these so you can see what they look like. So this is this, <clears throat> excuse me, standard receipt printer. Receipt printer. Um, yours actually will print and look nicer than mine. Um, mine, uh, your name and address will be centered up here. And if your receipt printer supports it, you can have your logo on your receipt print on your receipt. That's a pretty cool thing. So it's that's a, a capability built into your receipt printer. And then once that one goes away, we're gonna have the other receipt come up here. I think in a minute. There we go. This is the full paid invoice. Um, so this also can have your your uh, logo and that would be right up here in the upper right corner. If you want have questions about how to add that, just contact our support team and they would be happy to help you. Um, remember, email them support at pcsynergy.com with any questions that you have. Okay, so that's kind of the heads up on the basics, shipping, cashing out. We're going to go over and look at some of your settings and some of the things that you can do in Postalmate. So we're going to go back over to the ship. And again, I just want to reiterate using the POS button here and the ship button here to go back and forth rather than the bottom bar is a healthier way to use Postalmate. So most of your settings for the shipping side are up here in tools, Postalmate settings. 
if you purchased your store as an existing store from the previous owner, they may or may not have had the settings set up the way you want them. So you can go through here and make adjustments. And remember, you know, if you break something, just call us up, we'll help you fix it. Just let us know what you were doing and where you were playing and we'll help you go fix it. Store information is your store details. Branding is where you can enter your brand. So maybe you want your logo and your colors in Postmate. You'll notice in my Postmate, there's a beautiful Postmate logo here. We have our Postmate blue down here in the bottom, but maybe your colors are a different color and maybe your logo you want your logo on your screen, you certainly can. You can adjust it right here and we have a list of different colors to choose. So let's say, for example, I want to go sky blue. I'll do that and I'll click save. In just a moment, you'll see this blue change. Give it a moment. Maybe I have to close out. I really will, I promise. There it goes. <laughs> so now it's sky blue. So you can change that. Carrier setup, that's where you set up with all your carriers, including Indicia. It's also where you select your price groups. Price groups um, by UPS and FedEx, unless you're in a franchise, um, and even some when you are in a franchise, are tiered, what we call tier levels usually. And they are a number, and they will go, UPS goes from 1 to 10, FedEx 1 to 5, um, DHL right now is two to four. And basically the rule of thumb is the higher the tier, the better the discount. But those tiers are assigned to you by the carriers based on the amount of volume you give them. Um, when you first start out as brand new accounts, they usually give you what I would call a starter level. And the starter level is not bad. It's a very, fairly handsome, decent discount. So it's a good place to start. But after a period of time, if you don't, if your volumes with that carrier don't meet the criteria for that, they will lower your, your tier level. Or if you are particularly busy, they'll raise your tier level and you'll get better discounts. Um, po uh, Post Office through Indicia has a different, they actually name or have a name for each of the tier levels. You have to know what you signed up for to select the correct one with Indicia. Setting shipping rates is here. There are videos on our website. So let's go really quickly to the website and just show you, um, let's see if I can, whoops, sorry about that, picked the wrong one, there we go. At our website, you'll you'll go to our website, enter PostalMate, and you'll see the Help Center right here in the middle or up here in the upper section, you can go to the Help Center here either way. I'm just gonna go to the Help Center and you can type things in here like, how do I set my rates? Now, let me just tell you, this is not a generic boring Help Center like a lot of websites have. This is the database that we use to train new support technicians in PostalMate. So consequently, it has a lot of good information um, so, for example, um, uh, let's say I got error 1066. Look at that. So now I can find out what that is and know the answer right away. Oops, it moved up on me. So you can get lots of great information from this. Um, also, down below, popular topics, including our hardware requirements, and then down below is videos, tech notes, and webinars. And this is your main source of training. If you still have questions, here's some information on um, support where you can submit a support ticket electronically. You can always email them or you can call them. Your choice. All right, having said that, um, we have videos on there for setting rates and I'd want you to watch those because rates are fairly complex. Um, you need to understand what your rates are and what your margins are. This is not where you check your rates. This is where you set your rates. Where you check your rates is over here. See, this is a set retail shipping rates. Every single time you come into the screen, it's gonna say 50 and 100 because that's a default. So I could change this to 60 and 120 and go out of it and I come back into it, it's gonna say 50 and 100 because that's just the baseline default. That's not telling you that's what your rates should be at. It's in case you had an employee that didn't know what they were doing and they came in here and they said, oh, ha, 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 I'm gonna just start clicking things, you know, and, and, and does something and sets your rates, um, changes your rates. Well, at least they would have to actually go in here and purposely enter something lower than that for you to be less than 50%. Um, 
please don't ask our support team what the norm is in the industry for rate setting. There's a wide variance on what's common. Uh, you have to decide what's right for your store. And it does tend to vary by service and carrier. So um, media mail is going to have a completely different margin usually than FedEx overnight. Uh, so it is up to you. And it also often takes into consideration your discounts. So to add, uh, rates consist of base rates, add-on rates, surcharge rates, and insurance rates. All those things affect the, the final rate. And by the way, there are several alternate insurance companies supported by Postmate. If you want to use an alternate insurance company, you do need to know the rules for that company, but you can make more money because they charge much less than the carriers do for insurance. We get into shipping settings, and this is where you set up your screens. So remember on my rate comparison screen, I had different tabs and they were named best services and they had different things. And then I had, I didn't have media mail on my main tab and so on and so forth. Those things are set up um, in here. So this first one is the prompts. This is the one that says, I want to enter my customer and then I want to enter my ship to, and then I want to enter the weight, blah, 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 blah. So these are the prompts. The service display is what those tabs are named and you can name it right here, and what's available on each of those tabs. So I only have FedEx available on FedEx. I only have UPS available on UPS. On DHL, I might do a few weird things. On post, oops, I just moved that. They're very sensitive. On US Mail, I have a few things. When, this, when the check mark is gray, it means you have some services you don't want to show at all. So like for USPS, for mail, I wouldn't want to show Global Express Guaranteed it's not a service I would sell at my store under any circumstance. If you have questions about that, you can contact me and I'll tell you why. Um, basically, it's a FedEx service. Why would you pay post office extra money for FedEx when you have can do it right through FedEx? Then you'll have, have carrier branded. It's a different rate comparison screen. It looks the same in many cases, but it is different. And so you can set it up different and it has different settings here. Um, then I'm going to take you way over to the other button because the other button has some very important information. Remember we talked about the A, C, and D number, which is in the upper right corner of the rate comparison screen. It shows your cost, your published rate, and your dollar profit. That's set right here. And you would want these settings. So if you want to take a screenshot or a snapshot with your cell phone, this would be a great opportunity. Um, wholesale, published, in profit, and profit. You'd want them in that order uh, for on your screen. Your address validation provider in most cases is going to be Indicia. About 96% of our customers are Indicia customers. So um, that's going to be the selection. And then you, we have a feature here called Address Autocomplete, which I really love. And I would highly recommend checking that and using that. Over in the middle on the left, make sure that under dimensions, you either have dimensions, required dimensions for services with dim rating or required dimensions for all services. One of those bottom two. Um, is the best best to have. And then make sure anytime the button is green, make sure you click it to save it before you leave that screen. All right, so drop off settings, this is where you set up your drop off receipt and how, how when it prints. ProPack settings we're not going to get into. ProPack is the package estimator system that helps you to package an item up. That's a Fairly complex, I would say a little bit more advanced feature, something that you should get into about six months after your start with Postmate. <coughs> Excuse me. Package receiving. Um, and that is something that we talked about right over here. So when you receive a package, email notifications for your customers, uh, and so on and so forth. If you have any questions about labels, label settings are right here. And then your printer, your default report printer, must always be selected right here. And I don't have printer selected to my computer at all. But right here would be where you have your HP or whatever it is um, set up. Could be a brother, could be an Epson, could be a who knows what, Xerox. Um, but this is where you would set up your report printer and make sure that that's a default. Postmate tends to um, look for printers in order of um, selection. If you don't have the number one, which is your report printer in the setup here, then it kind of misses sometimes when it goes to the label printer or the receipt printer, et cetera. There are four, five, five different printers you can have set up with PostalMate, a report printer, a label printer, a receipt printer, a Dymo printer, and a two by two printer. And I hope I didn't miss one. 
So you could, you don't need all of those, but you could technically have up to five printers. So five, five machines or five, five things happening where it could be looking for the right printer. So making sure that you have the report printer set in here is important. Um, I see a question that I'm going to answer before I go to the settings in CashMate, and that is how do I look at my current rates or the rates that I'm currently set at? So we'll go back to set shipping rates. And this is only looking at the base rates. This doesn't include surcharges and it doesn't include add-ons and it doesn't include fuel surcharges. This is just the base rates. Kind of like when you buy a car, um, you, you have that base price of the car, but then the technology package and the comfort package and all those things add on to it. So just the base rates. We're going to go over into this section here, weight-based services, for example. Weight-based is 90 plus percent of all your shipments. Fixed rate services is the other option. That's when the Price does not change when the weight does. So that would be like some envelope services, priority mail flat rate services, things like that. But weight based is most things. So we'll go into um, FedEx ground. I'll look at FedEx home delivery. And then you're gonna drop this down. These are your retail rates. So this is what you're charging your customer before surcharges, add-ons and insurance. And then down here, you have several options to look at. The one that's going to show you what your current margins are is the first one with the percent sign, profit percent retail over wholesale. And you can see that in my sample, I have it set up to a little over 30, 54% over wholesale. But I might have it something different with a different um, service. So for example, I could go here to uh, FedEx Express, choose today, and I don't know, but I might have it set different. And indeed I do. So, and you can have it different for different weights in different zones too, just because it's uh, one here doesn't mean, in fact, let's go look at, here's a great example, post office. I'll go priority mail. You can see they're different on every single weight and zone. So that's just up to you and how you set it. But um, typically, just so you know, there are over a million rates in PostalMate. It's not, uh, there's no one place that you're going to be able to go and check your rates and see what all, you know, it all is at one spot. Because as you can see, just for Priority Mail, I have nine, eight zones and it goes up to, let's go all the way down, 70 pounds and it's different in every single weight and zone. You, can, you multiply that by all the services and it gets crazy, millions of rates. So hopefully that will help you out. And then add-on rates are right here. Add-ons are things like a signature or a COD, things you choose to add to a package. Surcharges are things that the carrier is gonna add to your package whether you want to it or not. And those are right here. And additional handling, DAS is delivery area surcharges for different circumstances. Okay. And then over on the right is your fuel surcharge. And we do update for this for you every month or every week, depending on the carrier. Those can change weekly or monthly, depending on what the carrier is. So um, we update this for you. You can charge an additional over here, but be careful because when you start entering numbers over here, it can strongly affect your prices. And I don't want you be, to be surprised. I had a customer last week who um, was totally freaked out. She has two stores and at one store she would, she did this international package and it was $800 and change. And at the other store, the exact same package was $1,200 and change. And she was totally freaking out. She called and she had an additional 50% fuel surcharge in here. Um, which adds 50% margin to, to the rate. So it strongly affected that package. So just be careful what you add over here. I would never suggest a number like 50, <laughs> maybe a number like five, but not 50. Okay, so I'm gonna go over into the settings for the cash register now and the POS, which is cash rate. And we'll go up to the top again to tools, options, register settings. And that's where most of them are. This is where you can set up your main screen. So this screen right here, of course, is this one back here. You can change the buttons. You can change the names on the tabs. Um, this one is your functions, which are over on this side. This is where you can customize those. I've got quotes on one. I've got all my discounts nicely located on the last one. And then your tender types. And you can choose what tender types you want on here. 
and you, there is a spot where you can customize, for example, online or uh, Square or uh, PayPal or something like that. Now, it won't communicate with any of those devices. It's just a, a it's what I'll call a stupid button, <laughs> meaning it'll tell you on the receipt that it's an online or PayPal or something, but it won't communicate with PayPal. It's just for record keeping. It's not going to actually process it through that method. So you would have to process it through PayPal or whatever the online method is separately, but you can indicate it for your records here. And then receipt settings, what you want to appear on the receipt. Usually we don't tip, typically in this industry include the weight and dimensions on the receipt. We don't want our customer going home and checking what the price would be online. We'd rather not do that. Um, receipt layout. This is where you can have your logo set up right here. Uh, your store information, your shipping disclaimer. This is only going to appear when the shipment is moved from the shipping side of Postmate over to Cashmate. And then your trailer. If you want to use an interface with the, for credit cards, this is where the setup would be for that. I don't discourage it or encourage it. It's a personal, personal decision for you. Um, usually it's, it's based on whatever you get the best deal on because it can get expensive running credit cards. Pull displays are required in California if your customer cannot see your screen. Um, so pull displays like at the grocery store, they have the long pole with the little digital readout. Um, that is only required right now that I'm aware of in California, and that's only if the customer cannot see the screen, see you entering um, information on the screen. A customer facing screen would preclude so you wouldn't have to have a pull display. So if you're interested in a customer facing screen, that's generally a nice idea. Uh, tendering types, this is where you can enter that online payment part I've talked about. So you could put PayPal in here, for example. QuickBooks interface. We do have a QuickBooks interface. It works with QuickBooks Online, not QuickBooks Desktop, just QuickBooks Online. Setting up the quote feature, that's the estimate feature where you can print out full page estimates. And then of course the famous other. The only thing I wanna to bring to your attention on the other tab is one of the most important things in the entire program. And that's down here, require for transactions on tender type. Just trust me, check mark it. It will save you years of headache. <laughs> Um, I'll quickly tell you what that's all about, and then we're going to go look at just a couple other things. Uh, require for transaction. Um, that means when you ring something up and you click total here, sometimes you get to yakety yakking with your customer and you hit enter on your keyboard and then it caches out as cash. And then they hand you your credit, their credit card. And you go, oh, I just rang it out as cash. Well, it's not such a big deal if it's just a book of stamps. But if it's a transaction that had their tracking number and all their shipping information, it's a big deal. There's no way to back out of it and change it. So when you have that check marked, you can hit the button on your keyboard as often as you want. Watch. I know you couldn't see it, but you could hear it. Just like I could click finish, 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 and <laughs> nothing happens. It requires you to choose something on this first before it lets you finish. So that way you don't accidentally click the wrong thing and then you get your receipt. So it saves you tons of headache. Just do it. Apparently didn't didn't feel it the first time. There we go. There we go. Okay, real quickly, we do have a full mailbox manager. So if you are a CMRA and you rent mailboxes, um, we can manage your entire mailbox rental program right here. And um, that's and nothing is additional money in in with PC Synergy with Postmate. You, the fee you pay covers all of this. Um, we only have one option for everybody, and that makes it very easy for bookkeeping. And then on the shipping side, when you a few other things you need to know. Maybe you need to avoid a shipment. Um, over down here in other activities is where you're going to avoid a shipment. And as long as you avoid the shipment the same day before your carrier has come up, come to pick up that package, you can do it all through Postmate. You don't have to go to the carrier or anything. It is important that you know that with UPS, FedEx, and DHL, as long as you do not use the label produced in Postmate, you will not be charged. You are only charged for the label if they scan it. So if you create a label and you forget to void it, don't panic if it's UPS, FedEx, or DHL. Just rip it in half and throw it away. Post office takes your money the moment it prints. So the only way to get money back is to come in here and void the shipment. You need to do it before the carrier pickup of that day. If you forget to do it and you think of it later or the next day, you can still void it, but it has to be done at your indicia.com, um, at the website indicia.com on your account there. It can't be done through Postmate. 
So what is the carrier pickup? What do I mean when the carrier picks up? Each day, all of your carriers come to your store and they pick up once a day usually, sometimes more at Christmas time, but usually once a day. You're supposed to do a carrier pickup for each carrier when they come. That may be four in the afternoon, but for some stores, like I have stores out in the middle of Montana that get a 12 noon pickup because it takes the driver four hours to reach the hub. And so you do that carrier pickup right here and you close that carrier out, whichever carrier it is. And when you do that, click next. Yeah, I've got some on hold. Okay, that's fine. Is this my last pickup of the day? Yes. Okay, next. There's this many packages. Does that match how many are going out? Yes. Okay, if no, click no, and then you can choose which ones are not included. But you can click yes and finish. And that closes the carrier for that day for FedEx Ground in this case. Okay, now what that does, well, it sends the, and it's some information to the carrier. Uh, it closes all your reports for that day. So it knows that your manifest is done for that day. It starts a new one for any, any future packages that day. Maybe you're closing your whole store right now and you don't have to worry about that. That's okay, but maybe you're not. Maybe your pickup came at 4 p.m. Now when somebody comes to ship something out at 4.30, Postal Mate's going to have the correct days for when it should arrive because part of that carrier pickup is rolling the days or advancing the days forward so that on your rate comparison screen, it adds a day for that carrier, but not for other carriers because they haven't picked up yet. So UPS hasn't picked up yet, so it still will go out today, but FedEx Ground has, and so it won't go out till tomorrow. And that's how Postal Mate knows all of those answers. So you do want to com uh, complete a carrier pickup every single day. Some additional features on this page are find package. Find package works um, for as long as you've had Postmates. So if you wanted to find a package, let's go to a date range. Um, I'm just going to go crazy here. Let's go. Um, let's go long time ago. Let's see what I have here. It's probably a Sunday. My luck, it's a Sunday and there's no activity. So let's see what's up. Oh, no, look, there's there's packages. I can look at packages that were shipped nine years ago, and I can get the details on that. So I can click on that one and go view and get the details on that. I can print, oh, let me go back to view. I can print um, uh, sometimes a label, but usually it's a generic label. It's not a, not the actual barcoded label. I can also print, um, yeah. So I can also print other information out and the tracking and what have you. So that's kind of a cool feature. There's a lot more that we haven't touched on in Postal Mate and that I hope that you will, um, learn about in the future through webinars, through videos, through dabbling yourself, and maybe through regional trainings where we can we can meet you one-on-one. -on -one. You undoubtedly have additional questions. If you do, you can type them in now. But as, as things work, usually you think of the question the moment, moment we finish the webinar. And if that happens to you, go ahead and email them in to uh, support at pcsynergy.com. Now, I'll even monitor the emails for the next 15, 20 minutes uh, to see if anything comes in that needs my particular attention. But otherwise, one of our wonderful support technicians will be happy to help you uh, answer your questions as best they can. And I wish you happy shipping with Postal Mate. Again, if there's any further help that we can give you, just let us know. I'm going to go to um, questions. I may have gotten all the questions. So if there's somebody else that has some questions, please let me know. Okay. All right. How do you set your tier levels? Okay, so tier levels are set, again, tools, Postmate settings, carrier setup, and then you choose the carrier and look for the dollar sign. So with FedEx, this store is set at a tier two. For UPS, this store is set at a tier four. You can just click on the dollar sign, drop this down, and select the correct tier if it's not a tier four. How do you know what your tier level is? Um, the carrier can help you with that. There are some videos on our website that will help you. We don't know. Um, the carriers do not tell PC Synergy or Postal Mate. PC Synergy is the company, Postal Mate is the product, in case you're wondering the difference. Um, the carriers do not communicate with us about what tier level you're on. And those change, UPSs can change every week and FedExes can change every month. DHL is a little bit longer. I, I wanna say they do it quarterly-ish, 
Um, they're more casual about it, a little bit more casual, but um, it can change. Now, I'm not, just because it can change that frequently doesn't mean it will. Usually a store might change once or twice a year on one of their tier levels. Usually they stay pretty static, but if you're suddenly growing or suddenly decreasing, um, then you will want to make sure to check your tier, tier level more frequently. Any other questions? How to personalize the USPS ETA? That's a great question, Alexandra. Um, let's go up to that. This is a really long instruction. So prepare to write down and prepare to take shorthand, <laughs> okay? Um, it goes like this. Edit, shipping carrier. Scroll down until you get to USPS or United States Postal Service, highlight it, click edit. Then in the top white box, look for the service that you want to change. For example, I'm going to do um, media mail. Click edit. And then find the tab that says display. And you'll see two blanks here. Yours will be blank, but mine are already filled in. And in this one for media mail, I've got one to six weeks educational only. So that's what you do it. And you have to do it for each individual service. It's not, you can't do it as a group. Um, and then you would go and do your next one. And then display. And then you see for priority mail, I have two to nine days, not guaranteed. You can have it say whatever you want, but it is character limited. So you can't go crazy. The words not guaranteed pretty much cover. I don't think I could go any beyond that. Maybe one character extra. I don't know about that. So you can't, can't, um, you cannot write a book in this area. All right, I'll go back. I'll redo that. I'll do go through those instructions real quickly again. Edit, shipping carrier, USPS, edit, choose your service, edit, display tab. Okay, all right. Hopefully that got all your questions. I'm sure I forgot something terribly important. Oh, of course, let's close the day out real quick before we leave. Oh my goodness. So you've done a wonderful day. You've done tons of business. It's time to close your day. Go over to your cash drawer here. Go up to the top to file, close register day. And this is where you're gonna count out all of your cash. Now you will have, an, you could have a number of things here just depending on what things you accepted that day. Um, it'll show all the tender types as possible. But um, I only did a, 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 some visa and cash today. So the little sigma button is how you count out the cash and you can just enter the quantity and it will do the addition for you. If you work your store alone and you are absolutely sure you did not steal from yourself, then you can just manually here enter the amount that's in the drawer. It's funny though, I can tell you, I was a store owner for 25 years. I worked my store alone many times. It's a crazy, how, even when you're good at math, how often you shortchange yourself or overcharge something where you end up with a few pennies extra or a few pennies less. So it would, it is a good idea to count on a regular basis. And then your visa, you could just enter it, but I like to use the Sigma button here and check off all of the items individually and then click okay. That way I know I got them all ticked. And then I, when I do a deposit slip, it will let, list those items. If I don't check them off individually, those items won't be individually listed on the deposit slip. And then I click uh, close day. This is your last opportunity to print an ex, the final X report. It will be wiped out of the system in 24 hours completely. So after this moment, you can never print the X report that prints out on the receipt printer. You could still print a... Register activity report, I believe it's what it's called. Um, and that will have the, the information until you close out tomorrow. And after that, it's gone. Now that doesn't mean the information is gone, just in the format that's used in the X report, is it gone? So um, always choose yes. And then it will print on your receipt printer. And then you exit and go, now you can exit out of CashMate. And now you're going to close out a Postmate. And Postmate's going to ask you if you'd like to do a backup. Always say yes. Always, always, always. Please don't skip days in your backups. It's really important. The other thing I want you to do is put those backups on a flash drive. And I'm just going to take a moment here 
to share a little bit, uh, a little quick little story of the what's going on with the, the world today. We have had two stores that we are aware of that have been affected by the riots in um, the recent uh, political activity. One store in California, their, the rioters came in, uh, caused a lot of damage to the store and demolished the computers is my understanding. And so um, I believe that store had, had backups and so they were, their, their data was safe. Uh, they kept their backups on a flash drive or in a cloud drive. And so they had that. The other store was in uh, Minneapolis and that store was burnt to the ground. So I don't know, I haven't talked with that store because of course the store is closed. I can't exactly call him, but I'm um, hoping that he had his data saved uh, in the cloud. So those are things that you can do and we encourage you to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and we will, um, we do have webinars like this posted on our website. I know it was awfully long, but as a newbie, don't be afraid to ask questions. Questions are good. Um, I always say that only only people who don't want to learn don't ask questions. So questions are good. Go ahead and send them in. If you you might want to just have a list of questions. Sometimes we get brand new owners and they'll send in a list of like eight questions um, on all different things. And then that allows our support team throughout the day when they have spare moments to go in and type up some answers and then send you an email later on in the day. So that's a great way of getting specific answers if you if you can't find them elsewhere. Um, the Help Center on our website is also a great place to find answers. So we wish you the best of luck. We welcome you to the Postmate family. It is really a family. We get to know many, many of our customers really well um, and even get to see them during the regional events. So we hope to see you too. Uh, hope you enjoyed this webinar. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye, everybody.